I'm Justin Zach, Vice President of Strategy at Moonwood Technologies. I'd like to welcome you to our third webinar of our monthly seven-part series entitled Experience Options Like Never Before. Uh, this is a series which will give viewers an exclusive opportunity to learn about a variety of topics related to options from industry experts at SIBO. I'll also be asking these SIBO experts about their presentation, their professional lives, and their views on various options topics. You, the viewer, will get a chance uh, near the end of the webinar to ask questions, so make sure to watch the entire show. I wouldn't want you to miss anything. Uh, the educational presentation should be about 15 or 20 minutes, uh, uh, followed by the questions for about 45 minutes total. Uh, this webinar series is part of a broader collaboration between Moomoo and SIBO that includes uh, several in-person events uh, and the introduction of index options on the Moomoo platform uh, last November. Uh, Speaking of these in-person events, uh, we will be holding a, a in-person event in Chicago on September 24th at SIBO's headquarters about why you need a portfolio and how you can use options in assisting you to build one. It's, it's a free event. Uh, there's going to be several different speakers, including ones from SIBO there to talk about different option strategies uh, used to build a portfolio. We'll offer, also have a few surprise giveaways, so please mark your calendar uh, and look out for details in the future uh, via email, social media, and in the Moo community. Uh, today, I would like to welcome uh, Vince uh, Seco, Director of Retail Delivers at SIBO. Vince is the bridge between the retail community and the SIBO Exchange and its vast array of options products. Uh, the title of his presentation is uh, Dive into Index Options with SIBO, a Primer to Key Benefits. Uh, Vince going to talk to us about index options, what they are, uh, some of the reasons you might want to use them. He will also talk with us about uh, the growth and current state of the index options market and tell us a, a lot about the new and exciting developments in the world of index options. Uh, these slides uh, are going to be available in the webinar chat uh, and a replay of this video will be available in app for the next 24 to 48 hours and then on YouTube in about a week or two. Um, Additionally, we have uh, a podcast that I'm working on called uh, Mobile Money by Moomoo. If you download the app, uh, you can watch it, uh, listen to it in the app, and it's also available in Spot Spotify and Apple. We have a great new episode coming out tomorrow, so be please stay tuned for that one. Uh, before we begin, please make sure to go to uh, moomoo.com backslash US to check out our current sign-up promotions uh, if you're not already a client. client. Uh, please uh, welcome Vince to the show. Thanks, Justin. Um, a big thank you for, for everyone who's joined the call today. Um, as Justin noted, I, I began my career trading options um, uh, as a market maker and specialist on the exchange floor. Um, I actually primarily, funnily enough, I, I traded primarily in single stock names rather than index. Um, once I got uh, a degree, uh, I got my MBA, I left trading for a small analytical firm, uh, which some of you may know, it's uh, what's called a platform uh, options platform called Live Vault. Um, we got acquired by SIBO in 2015, um, and I've been here ever since. Um, so my roles evolved a little bit. Um, previously, I was running sales for our risk and market analytics. Um, I About two years ago, I decided to jump over to the global derivatives division. Um, so I've been here ever since. I cover like, uh, and what Justin said earlier, I cover um, sort of the interface for retail at the exchange. Um, so my cover, I cover the retail options ecosystem, right? So that could be anything from brokers um, and their platforms to third third party technology providers um, and social networks and um, you know back testers, things like that. Um, to, today, I think we're going to cover a couple. Um, we're going to cover the fastest growing area in the options industry. Um, that's namely index options. Um, we're not going to go too deep today. We're just going to kind of cover the key benefits um, that are unique to index options as compared to single stock and ETF. Um, so let's just get this kicked off. I will go ahead and um, I'm going to skip these first couple slides um, only from a standpoint uh, because I know Andy Beavers did a presentation, I believe, last month or two months ago where we covered this exact same stuff. So these are there in the deck. Um, you know, SIBO is just over 50 years old. We had our 50th anniversary last year. Um, we're much more than just um, a, a derivatives exchange. Um, we have 
tradable, you know, several tradable asset classes, options, futures, equities, FX, U.S. treasuries. Uh, clearly, we're going to talk more about the option side today. Uh, but, you know, just the, the point being, SIBO is a global organization. Um, going to more of the topics of today's call. Um, so the, the U.S. options market um, in general, uh, it's had tremendous growth over the last few years. Um, when I was trading, like I said, I traded back until the early part of the 2010 decade. Um, you know, volumes were kind of trading around 4 billion contracts per year up until 2017. Um, so we've seen explosive growth since then. It's, it's up actually threefold almost from 2017 to 2023. And I think we're going to hit another record this year. Obviously, it's a little too early to say, uh, but we're on that trend right now. Um, what are the factors behind that? Um, retail is obviously a large part of the growth, um, It's but it's market-wide, right? There's retail, there's institutional components to this. Um, but some of the key factors... Um, uh, at least on the retail side, and I guess I, I guess across the across the industry, um, more products to trade, more expirations, better platform technology, um, tighter markets in terms of bid ask spreads, um, and then obviously you have some retail specific factors. Um, commissions came down obviously substantially. Um, you know there was elimination of ticket charges, um, no free brokerages started up, which which um, you know prodded some of the legacy brokers to, to remove ticket charges. So, so really, you know, there's been a confluence of events um, and that's why it's a large part of the reason why we're at volumes where we are right now. So um, speaking more specifically to the index side, um, you know, that there's growth everywhere, right? So we, we mentioned that the, you know, market traded 11 billion contracts last year in 2023, every, um, equity options, so single stock options, ETF and index were all up. Um, index, obviously, if you take a look, it was up 33% in terms of volume. So there's something leading to that uh, massive growth. Um, you know, while the others are growing um, healthily, um, index has obviously had much more explosive growth over the last couple of years. So a um, lot of reasons, um, and we'll cover some of those today. Um, so let's just get started. What are index options? Um, so at a high level, index options give you, give the holder the right to buy or sell the value of an underlying index. Um, think of SPX, right? So you're buying, you have the option to buy the value of the index. Contrast that with ETF options or single stock options where you're given the right to buy or sell shares. Um, so that's kind of a key distinction is value versus shares. Um, if you think about that, that provides a context for some of the benefits um, or distinctions between the products that we're going to cover today. Um, you know, being this is a moving webinar, we, we plugged in at the top of this, this uh, page, the SIBO index options available in the Moomoo platform. Um, Justin can certainly opine on these further. Um, but you know the obvious ones that I'm sure most of you have heard about: SPX, VIX, um, RUT. Um, we also have XSP and DJX um, available in the Moomoo platform. Um, and some of the benefits of the index options, I'll just you know, just I'll describe them in more detail on future slides here. Um, cash settlement, uh, tax treatment, European exercise, certainty of settlements, um, and extended access. Um, so. We'll cover those um, in a little more detail here. So we're going to first um, get into cash versus physical settlement. So some of the distinctions between index and ETF or single stock options. So um, I, I, you know, I, I used, I simplified this, right? XSP and SP. So XSP, just to describe XSP um, really briefly, it's the one tenth um, version of SPX, right? So SPX is a, you know, five thousand ish um, dollar underlying, right? Um, SPY is about one tenth that, right? Um, XSP is the one tenth version of, of S, S, 
SPX, which enables us to kind of compare these apples to apples. They're, you know, they don't close at the exact same price. Um, I use this for simplicity of the, of the, you know, of the example here. Um, they, they trade, a, you know, a, a very, very highly correlated. There are distinctions, obviously, because of cash settlements, um, you know, the, the, you know, the fact that SPY has dividends, there are distinctions that lead to a, a, a slightly different price, but generally they're going to move up and down uh, virtually the same um, on a daily basis, right? So, so using that as the backdrop, um, we're comparing XSP and SPY just from a standpoint of, because it's uh, uh, notionally, it's more of an apples to apples comparison, right? Um, so we're using an example where SPY and XSP both close at 476.68. Um, customer long, the 475 calls in each of those instruments. Um, so if you think about XSP, um, recall what we said about index options giving you the right to buy or sell the value of the index. You're not buying or selling shares, right? So what that leads to is cash settlement. So with the index option and XSP, your position settles the cash. Um, so that 475 call that you were long, stock closed or index closed to 476.68. The position settles the cash, one contract, $1.68 times that 100 multiplier, that's $168 credit to your account. Um, you take the ETF example, and again, I use SBY, there's other ETFs, um, you know, VOO, IVV, um, SBY is obviously the one that you, you've, one of them that you, you've heard of, um, just say, you know, it's tremendous liquidity, it's, it trades about 8 billion, 8 million contracts a day. Um, but here's the example where there's some distinction with the index option. Um, in the ETF, if you're long the call, and it finishes in the money, you basically have, to, you, you exercise your call option and you are, you, you have the option to buy the stock, right? So you're paying $475, um, you know, it's a 475 strike call. So that's a $47,500 cash outlay, even though that position is theoretically worth 47,668 at that point, right? So it's, it, but you have that long residual position in the stock. So, um, so it opens up, you know, potential market gap risk, um, overnight risk. Um, and as a result, you'll often, you know, you'll see like forced closeouts or stuff uh, or things if you do not have your money, the money in the account to, to uh, put out that cash outlay. Uh, European versus American style is probably the other key distinction that most people um, associate with index um, and ETF options. Um, so European, so uh, indexes are almost invariably uh, European style. That means no early exercise. Um, and on the flip side, no assignment, no early assignment, right? So there's no dividends. You can trade out of your positions prior to expiration. I, I want that to be clear, right? There, you could still, you know, if you're long an index option, you can trade out of it um, and close it and you can actively trade, but you can't exercise early. Um, again, the flip side is you can't get assigned early either. Um, American style, you do have an ETF and equity options, and this goes to single stock as well. So you think of you know, Meta or, you know, Google or any equity option, um, that's American style. It is possible to exercise those prior to expiration. Um, those are typically going to be exercised, you know, in the case of calls for dividend considerations or puts for interest. Um, same thing, you can trade out of them. But again, the, the one thing that we really cognizant of is to, to remember is the flip side of exercise is assignment. Um, so you may be assigned into possession of a stock or the ETF prior to expiration. Um, that's not going to happen on the index side, right? There is no early exercise. So um, in this, you know, little, this little graphic here shows, you know, for this option that expires on this day, you can only exercise or get assigned on expiration. Whereas on the ETF side, you know, in theory, uh, you know, theoretically you can get, 
assigned at any any night up until you know if you're short that option you can get assigned um any day up until expiration going to the you know, going a little deeper into why some of this is important um so there's a little offshoot um uh, contra assignment implications. So you may be familiar with contra assignment. It's essentially the ability to to exercise a position that is not in the money, or to or contra exercise, or to not exercise a position of DNA to not exercise a position that is in the money. That might happen if a stock moves after the close, right? So, so you know both XSP index and the ETF close same examples before at 476.68, but in this case the market moves higher after the market closed to 478 dollars. So in the case where somebody shorts a 477 call on both of these instruments, you know with the index option, the close is a close, right? So it closed at 476.68. It's not in the money that position expires worthless. Your short position expires worthless. Um, there's no additional debit or credit to the account. Um, there's no residual position. Um, on the ETF options example, you're short that call. Um, long option holders have the ability to contra exercise an option until after the market close. I believe that's, uh, it, you know, Justin, maybe after, after I, you know, go through my slides here, maybe you could correct me if I'm wrong. It's typically, I believe, actually until five o'clock. Um, so you have that ability to contra exercise an option after the market close. Um, you know, if you're short a position, what that results in is you don't actually know your if you got contra assigned into to a longer short position, right? So in this case, stock moves to the four seventy eight level. Or the, the ETF moves to 478 level, it's very likely that you're going to, that the person that's long those contracts is going to exercise, um, even though at the close, it wasn't in the money. It went in the money after the close and they're probably going to exercise their calls, which means you're going to be short those positions um, as the short position holder, right? Um, so that opens you up to some potential market gap risk there as well. Uh, this one, I would say, um, certainly we're not tax advisors. I, I don't purport to be a tax advisor. Um, so certainly any of this, you'd want to speak with your tax advisor. Um, but generally speaking, index options um, have um, a slightly different tax treatment um, where index options have, uh, they're eligible uh, as section 1256, IRS, IRS 1256 of the tax code, um, they're eligible for 60-40 tax treatment, right? So that's 60% long-term, 40% short-term, um, even if they're held less than a year. Um, that's, uh, that, that, that comes into play, obviously, long-term rates are lower than short-term rates, right? So Long-term rates range from zero to twenty percent. Short-term rates generally higher than that. Um, the ETF and equity options are typically going to be taxed as ordinary income, um, where the short-term rate equals the ordinary income rate. Right. So this example goes through what happens for whether you have sixty forty tax treatment and the potential tax savings there. Um, because of the blended rate, the blended 60-40 rate, there is some tax savings that you can see on this slide, right? So for a hypothetical $50,000 annual taxable trading profit, um, there's a pretty sizable potential savings in tax rate um, or taxes based on that 60-40 blended rate. Um, I include some definitions um, that we covered earlier um, here as well. Um, I did want to bring up one minor, uh, maybe not minor, but um, one additional thing that I had covered, I mentioned extended access. So what this really means, um, not even not even referring to just the global trading hour session, right? But you are able to, in the index option, often to open positions until the market close or closer to the market close um, without worry of assignment risk, right? Um, that it's typically, uh, you know, every broker acts differently, but generally opening a position 
later on in the day is is uh, you know difficult and impossible with an ETF um, or a single stock option that's expiring in a few hours. So, um, so that about covers um, the content um, at least for the slide portion. I know um, Justin's probably gonna have some questions here and um, happy to to answer yours as well. Thanks for that great presentation, uh, Vince. Uh, it was really exciting to see uh, all the differences. I know we moved through that pretty quickly and, and not everyone is is 100% super familiar with options. So I do ask everyone that's viewing, please you send us your questions. We might not get to them all, but I, I do want to try and cover this. And, and I just want to get it, maybe we can just reiterate, you know, go back to the very beginning. Uh, can you talk about, you know, very specifically what an index option is? I think so many people are familiar with uh, options on stocks and ETFs, right? So let's just say, let, let me just ask you just really beginner stuff. What's an index and, and maybe give me an example and then an option on that index. So, I mean, you think of the S&P 500, I guess that's the, that's the, you know, it's sort of the standard, right? Um, so the S&P 500, the SPX is an index, right? Um, the SPX options, they give you the right to buy or sell the value of that index, right? So the index, you know, S&P 500, for example, it's 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 based on 500 component stocks. Um, the Russell is another index, um, which is a small cap, 2000, um, Russell 2000 um, stocks, right? So it's a basket of those options. Now, now the, in the ETF options are also based on a basket, but they... They have shares. There's no shares of an index, right? It's a it's a calculated derived value. Um, there are shares of an ETF. Um, so that's really the biggest distinction. Obviously, they're very correlated. You know, if you're talking the index and the ETF option that is based on that index. Um, but the real distinction is the index is a value. The ETF um, does have shares, right? So I think you know it's it's probably the easiest way to describe it. Um, I, well, thank, thank you, Vince. I mean, it is, it is, a, it can be a very complicated subject. Can, uh, sure. and, you know, a lot of the people here may be just hearing about index options for the first time. And what we do, we have included a link to the slides in the webinar chat. You can click on those and kind of follow along. I know, you know, we, in the, you know, it, because we have limited time, he had to move through those uh, kind of quickly, but people, you go back and review it. Uh, and I'll tell everyone viewing now, you're, you're not going to get this in 45 minutes if you're brand new to it. It's going to take some time. But the Mumu app, uh, as well as SIBO, has some great educational resources. We have a lot in our learn section. SIBO uh, has a, a bunch at the end of, of this uh, presentation uh, to really help you learn. It, you know, you're not going to get it in one day, but we want to give you this introduction, uh, as well as people that already know about index options. We want to tell them a little bit about it. But before we get into all that, I, I just want to hear a little bit about, uh, you know, Vince and uh, kind of Vince, what do you do at SIBO? Yeah, so I, I do, I, I I cover, so I've had a, you know, I've been here about eight years now, um, got acquired in with a data platform firm called Liveball. Um, and, you know, as I say, and I was, it was on, on the side of the business doing risk and market analytics for, um, for the first six years I was here. Um, I did notice in the last few years, um, you know, there was starting to become more of a move you know, retail was just becoming a bigger and bigger part of the industry. Um, so I made the decision a couple of years ago to to go to our derivative to the global derivative side. So that's more the transactional side of the exchange, but focusing specifically on retail. We actually, for a long time, SIBO never had a direct carve out for retail in terms of coverage and sales and you know, sort of market intelligence. Um, as that has become a bigger part of the industry. Um, SIBO has gone ahead and, you know, put more and more resources on the retail side, right? So, um, so I cover the retail options ecosystem. So, you know, obviously connected with all the major brokers um, and, uh, you know, and the secondary brokers as well um, in the U.S. and North America. Um, and also, you know, the it's sort of what's underneath the hood, right? It's trying, part of the job is understanding not just the broker level, but also what's underneath it and what's bubbling up in terms of, you know, what technology is driving interest, um, what's some sort of, sort of the interesting technology out there. Um, you know, like I said, there's back testing, 
you know, there's there's a bunch of different different ways that people engage with the markets um, without even going through their broker, right? So so part of the role is trying to get a grasp on that larger third party ecosystem, which is a behemoth. There's just every day there's a new website, um, play you know, tons of platforms. So it's um, that's that's really an exciting part of the role. Oh, thanks. Uh, you know, it sounds like a, a really interesting position you have at SIBO. And now I want to get a little bit more into what you know you had on the slides. You talked a little bit about European exercise where, where you can't exercise until expiration and then American when you can just exercise whenever. Uh, you know, and I know a lot of people I hear and, and, and want to know, why would you ever want to exercise before the expiration? What? Why would you do that? So, I, I mean, I think the... The, the classic example is before a stock goes or an ETF goes dividend, if you have a call that's sufficiently in the money, I mean, of course, you're not going to exercise something that's out of the money, right? That wouldn't make any sense. But if you want to take possession of those shares that you can get, get the dividend, you're going to exercise before um, on the, you know, before the extended day, right? So, um, so a lot more often than not on a call, you'll see the exercises and assignments be day before a stock goes ex, before it goes ex dividend, right? Um, so puts are a little bit different. Um, puts are more the calculation is more around interest rates, um, but similar idea. Like once it there's not enough value or time value or extrinsic value in the option, um, that you know, once the benefit of getting that dividend or interest um, outweighs that of what's left in the option extrinsically is when it gets exercised. So we do have some content on the website, um, which will, um, with our Options Institute, um, describe that in a little more detail. Um, and I'm, I'm certain Mumu has some similar as well. But really, again, the classic case is exercising a call before a stock goes ex dividend. Um, and, and again, that's because indexes do not have a dividend um, and don't have shares, right? You're not exercising a dividend or a, an index option. Great. And, and I have one of the questions from one of our users. And I think, I think there's always a little bit of confusion around index options, an index, uh, and an ETF on an index. Uh, and maybe you can kind of explain, uh, you know, the your product SPX, you know, is, uh, you know, all and you know the index and the index options versus this, you know, um, an ETF on an index, and I, and I think a lot of people are not quite sure how that ETF part fits in. Does that fit into the index options or not, or how does it work? And I think people are are interested in in under just maybe you could just clarify that a little bit for us. Yeah, you know, I, I, that's so the ETF. Um, it's the ETF has shares. Um, I guess it's uh, that's the simple way to describe it, right? It has shares, um, which means that in terms of all the exercise and assignments and you know how how it settles, it's going to be more equivalent to what you see on the single stock side, right? So if you're familiar with trading Meta, and you know you think of the the process for exercise or or how your your stock your your position settles at expiration the ETF is going to be ETF options are going to be very similar to that right index different because because there are no shares right so it's you know from a from a correlation standpoint they're highly correlated right i mean the s you know spx is the SPX options are based on the S and P five hundred, right? Um, SPY is as well, right? So it's they're they're extremely correlated in terms of movement, um, but it's those you know those key distinctions as far as value versus shares that that makes them different. Um, in I terms would, of well, yeah, in terms of in terms of that, I think a lot of people are interested. You know, what are the kind of volumes that you're seeing in in you know these. Your your big product SPX versus an ETF. Yeah, so um, that's a good question. So it's it's a so in terms of contracts, um, SPY is the largest 
in terms of contracts. It trades about 8 million contracts per day. I think it was 8.3 million contracts per day in the first quarter. Um, SPX trades about 3.2 million contracts per day, right? So um, that's also enormous. I mean, that's that's the, 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 the second largest or third, you know, it's going to be in terms of the sheer number of contracts. You also have to keep it in mind though, SPX is 10 times the size of SPY. Um, it's a $5,000 index. SPY is roughly a $500 ETF, right? So notionally, SPX is much larger. So SPX is about 75%, um, give or take, um, of the um, notionally adjusted SPX, SPY, um, and E-minis um, volumes. Um, so in terms of those, um, yeah, they're both massive products. Both have great liquidity. Um you start yeah, to, and that's something I want. I wanted to ask you about too. The liquidity, uh, yeah. you know, that sounds like a lot of volume. Liquidity, you know, how are people kind of afraid? Uh, index options might not be liquid enough. What kind of liquidity is is there really? Yeah, I mean, listen. I mean, I think you know we do studies on this. SPX is, I mean, it's it's you know it, it, the deepest liquidity pool in the world, right? So it trades on the floor. We have well over hundred market participant market makers um you know and these are the most sophisticated market makers in the world making um really good quotes um again i mean i think you know one of the things you have to keep in mind is the notional size right so anything in spx is 10 times the size of that of spy right so there's a there's i think but, but I mean, generally speaking both have you know very tight markets um you know those are the two you know two indices where you know that's it ETF and industry we've talked about most today. Um, there's other products. Um, XSP we mentioned, um, which is the one tenth SPX. You know, volume terms, that's you know, about 70,000 contracts per day. So in the in the overall realm, that's not a small number, right? I mean, in, in terms of like, you know, a lot of single stocks out there, 70,000 is a, you know, something that trades a fair amount of volume. Um, obviously a fraction of what you're seeing in SPX and SPY, right? So um, we're working pretty diligently to put in, you know, in, in place the right structures to get those uh, bid ask spreads, uh, you know, as tight as we could possibly get them. They, we've made considerable strides over the last few months, um, but you know, generally speaking, the more volume you see in a product, the more you know, volume begets li gets liquidity, begets volume, and it's sort of like a, you know, a, a, a cycle that just keeps perpetuating itself. Um, you know, other, other um, you know, another pair we also talk about is uh, Russell versus IWM. So IWM would be the ETF. Um, Russell would be the index for the Russell 2000. Um, notionally adjusted, Russell's about 33% of that, right? So um, still sizable volume, but um that's, uh, you know, so the major ones, I guess, we're covering. Today. Yeah, that's great insight into liquidity. And I think, you know, one of the other things I've heard a lot from a lot of people uh, are they're very interested in SPX because it, it has expiries every single trading day. Uh, and then there's also SPX and SPXW options. Can you tell us a little bit more about these differences and what an AM settlement means and, and why you want, might want an AM settlement? Yeah, you know, I, I first I, the first thing I'd say is, you know, from the retail perspective, the vast majority of SPX trades are going to be done in the PM settled contract. So that's SPXW. Um, Justin, maybe you can weigh in on how that's displayed on the Moomoo Moo platform. Um, but but generally, so SPXW, the PM settled contract, which is the one that's most popular with the retail community. Um, exercise settlement value is based on the closing sales price of each component security on expiration, right? So if you think about that, and that's similar or identical to what you think about with um, with ETFs and single stocks, it's based on the closing sales price of that you know component. Yeah, right? and that and that again is that's four p.m. Eastern, right? Correct. Um, so so the um, SPX, uh, the, the AM subtle contract is based on the opening sales price of each component security on the expiration date, right? So 
Um, why would people want to trade it? I mean, it's more of an institutional product. Um, it lines up with the, you know, the liquid S uh, S and P futures. So I think it's, it's, um, you know, I think the, what, you know, institutional trade both, right. But retail, I think veers much more towards the PM settled contracts. Um, whereas, um, you know, institutional does a, a substantial amount in the AM settled contract. So, um, you can find out a little bit more of that in the SPX fat sheet as well, which we have on this resource deck. Yeah. And, and so, you know, talking about that, you know, people again are interested in these everyday settlements. And, and here I have a, another question from one of our viewers uh, asking us, um, what are, what are some of the more popular strategies you're seeing when people trade uh, zero DTE on SPX? And for everyone uh, that doesn't know zero DTE, that means zero days to expiration or, or options that expire today. Yeah, you know, so I, I know we will have a future webinar dedicated for more in-depth discussion on zero DTE. Um, but that said, I can answer I can answer that question at a high level, right? So um, SPX, if you think about um, SPX and SPY, uh, SPX it's a it's a kind of a remarkable uh, nuance of the product that it's very balanced, right? So we see about 50-50. Um, 50% in spread strategies, about 50% in single leg. Um, generally, when you start talking zero to ETE and some of the single stocks and, and ETFs, it gravitates more towards single leg, right? So in, there's just a, there's a wide variety of, of strategies that happen in SPX. I mean, we do, we see a lot, you know, obviously there are people that buy outright calls and puts, um, also, there's um, popular credit spread strategies, um, iron condors, where people are trying to collect what's called ball risk premium. They're trying to basically take advantage of that, you know, little gap um, between, you know, it's called ball risk premium, right? The, the difference between the um, implied and realized volatility essentially over time. But um so you'll see a really big balance. I mean, I think in general, those are the biggest strategies. We see, you know, obviously outright single leg and then credit spread. We don't see a lot of naked strategies in zero DT, um, particularly from the retail community, right? So most of the, most of the, the, uh, most of the strategies that can be risk defined. It's going to be somebody selling a credit spread, maybe buying a debit spread, um, doing an iron condor, which is basically selling both a call and put vertical, um, spread. So you would sell, um, you would sell a put spread and sell a call spread. And that's, that's called an iron condor. Um, so those I'd say probably in order, it would be, you know, the credit spread complex and single leg, you know, roughly even ish. Um, and then iron condors, um, you know, being also something that's pretty popular. Thanks. And, and, and I know, you know, not, you know, there's not uh, index uh, options are not necessarily better in every single way. There is another question I have uh, from someone in uh, the, the chat asking about covered calls. And here you, you can't own an actual index. You can own, you know, something that tracks an index like an ETF or you can or you can do some type of derivative like a future but if uh, you want to do a covered call, you have to own an underlying and sell a call against it. Uh, Vince, what can you tell us about the possible future of that you know of uh, covered call writing and, and some of these things that might be coming down the pipeline? Yeah, so we we actually, as an exchange, we filed for um, for something called protected option last year. Um, got approved by SEC, where you can write an index option against the ETF. Um, upon ETF, or the, which is based on the same index, right? So if you think about um, the XSP and SPY example, um, we're still rolling that out. It just, we just got approval a few months ago. Um, obviously brokers have to work it into their, into their workflows. Um, but the, 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 the distinction is, you know, previously you would, if you did that position, you could do it, but you would have an uncovered margin. You'd basically be paying margin on, on the uncovered, um, on the option position, right? Um, 
now it's considered a covered position, which would mean that that it would be more similar to to doing a covered call. You know, so you so we could do it in the pair, right? So you could do it in X, SPY and XSP or something like that. So that would be the, that will be the future. Again, that's based on when when brokers are able to implement that in their in their um, in their you know margin logic. Um, but um, that that's something possibly to look for. Um, you know, later this year or sometime in 2025. Yeah, that's that's really exciting to be able to use different types of strategies across different types of products. I think, you know, we'll be looking out for that and hopefully, you know, uh, that comes to fruition uh, relatively soon. I have time for about uh, one last question. I, I, um, I should cover one, you know, one other thing on that, Justin. Just, just to be clear, the reason you would potentially do that strategy, right, is there is no call away risk with a, because of what we had discussed before, if you're doing an index option, you're not getting assigned early, right? So you would not get taken out of your stock position. Um, so in theory, you could have sort of like a perpetual overwrite. Um, so that's it, you know, one of the major benefits of doing that type of strategy. All right, thank, thanks for clarifying that. And again, we have time for one last question. Um, and we're about a month away from earnings season. And, uh, you know, do you see traders using index options during earnings season? Any any particular strategies that they might use uh, for for the earnings? Yeah, you know, I would say earnings plays. Um, we typically at retail we see that at the individual stock level. Um, I mean, we see professionals using dispersion strategies, right? So they'll sell index options, maybe sell the S. We keep going back to the SBX, but that's an example, right? So you would sell index options to finance purchases of some of the individual components, some are all. Um, so that is more of a professional strategy. I mean, I think in general, you know, on the retail side, most people are trading earnings in the specific instrument. So that would go down to the single stock level, potentially ETF. Uh, but certainly you can do it on the index. It's just, not, you know, it's, if you're playing for an earnings play in meta or whatever you know, I keep using it as an example, but if you're playing for an earnings play in those, typically you're going to use the instrument that you're specifically using that you, you're trying to take the direction on. Um, but again, I mean, dispersion strategies are, you know, are, are something that are, are done primarily on the professional side. Well, oh, thank you very much. I, I know we, we only we've only had about forty five minutes, and this is probably a topic you and I could talk about for for days. Uh, it's it, it, but it is it is a great product, uh, you know, and very you know just super interesting. And I know everyone wants to learn more. Uh, and so, just to reiterate, if you weren't here at the beginning, uh, this uh, will be available. This webinar will be available on replay uh, on the Mumu app. Uh, in the live section for about 24 or 48 hours. And we will post it externally to YouTube uh, in about a uh, a week or two. And again, uh, please check the webinar uh, chat. You can slide up there a little bit if, if it's uh, scrolled down. There There is a link uh, to the slides and you can access them right away. And the slides, uh, Vince has been really kind to provide some resources uh, to learn more at the end uh, of the presentation. And Mumu has a great help section uh, as well as uh, on the app, as well as on the website that uh, talks about index options, what they are, you can learn more there. And please uh, feel free to watch our next webinar, which will be coming up in July. We'll have a special guest, Mandy Zhu from SIBO, uh, here to talk with us uh, and dig down into the VIX on volatility. That's an index option. We didn't get much, uh, have much chance to discuss today, but I can't wait to talk with her uh, about that. Uh, please make sure to download the Mumu app uh, and we'll keep you abreast of all these upcoming educational webinars in partnership with SIBO and some of these other ones that we're also uh, doing on trading and markets and, and, and special events. Um, Vince, I want to thank you so much uh, for being on the webinar today. Do you have any parting thoughts for our audience? No, again, I think just echo what, um, what, what uh, Justin said, there's a lot of resources available, um, both through Mumu, through SIBO. Um, we're happy to help. Um, and, you know, I mean, I think, you know, the, the general ideas, you know, to, you know, obviously when you start out, if you're new to it, you, you want to dabble, right? And and um, not trade too big before you, you really get your feet under you. But, um, 
And there's definitely some exciting characteristics that uh, make these um, you know, products that retail can access. Well, thank you so much. And thanks to all you viewers. And we'll see you next time.